Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome to Changing the Lost Vanity. Vanity is a first edition Chronicles of Darkness game set in southern Florida during the year 1993. Father Katrina, played by Tillman, Raymond, played by Chris, Isabel, played by Andrew, Frank, played by Slavic, and Adam as the storyteller as they uncover the mysteries of the true fae and forge new paths for themselves in a world of beauty and madness. Follow us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM for channel updates, and we hope you enjoy this episode. Hey guys, welcome back to Changeling the Lost Vanity. Uh, We're going to just jump right into it. Uh, Where we left off last time, Manny and Frank were following Melissa into a, a dark subway tunnel where, where she says that she resides. She basically swallowed a handful of pills and has kind of been bringing Manny and Frank on this sort of like a wild goose chase to pick up the last living member of her motley, Emily. Melissa is trying to get out of Fort Lauderdale, and somehow Manny and Frank have been able to convince her to tag along with them in exchange for, for protection. Not not like an official pledge or anything like that. Just convincing her that it's in her best interest to to come with you guys if she wants to stay safe. Hoping that you guys would probably get some information about Raymond. Instead, you guys kind of got a lot of incoherent babble, a lot of drug-addled nonsense, um, kind of a lot of being jerked around. And basically, she's brought you guys to this empty train station. She's hopped off the platform and is is starting to make her way through a dark tunnel and is motioning for you guys to follow her. You and Manny are both already down from the platform standing on the on the train tracks. It's it's very late night, early morning. You haven't really looked at a clock in a while, but you know that there's no trains coming. There's no activity here. You imagine that there's probably some type of um like night security or something because people leave their cars there. It has like a uh, pay parking area. So you're, you guys are both just standing there right now and it's just dead silence. And Manny has this look on his face that is just almost like freaked. And he, he doesn't know to keep going. It's like his, his survival instincts are, are pulling him back from just walking into that darkness after Melissa. And you no longer see her. She's, she's fully engulfed into the, the darkness that's ahead. And he's just like, should, should we go? Probably, yeah. Or I'll go. Uh, is it dark in the tunnel? Yeah, it's it's completely pitch black. I'm guessing it's not within five minutes of midnight, is it? That's a really good question. I don't. Um, I feel like we were playing kind of fast and loose with the time last time. Let me see. It's a little bit past midnight. It's about it's about uh one thirty technically. Um, um, you don't really know okay. about like what the time is though. Yeah, okay. That's just because uh, of a catch for one of my, uh, oh, okay. uh, what's it called, uh, contracts. Yeah, but I'm going to use it anyway, because why not? I like using them. Okay, so I spend one point of glamour. I'm using the contract called Ulf's Heart from Eternal Summer, which means I shine the light of high summer on my surroundings. So what it basically does is... I roll strength plus my mantle plus occult. Got three successes for that, and which means it illuminates an area 200 yards around me and does not hinder my vision. Amazing. So yeah, you 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 pull that contract and you just feel the weird tingling in the back of your neck, and it's like a it's like a, a flare kind of just just lights up in front of you, and you can see you can see just like Melissa. You know, maybe maybe ten, fifteen feet in front of you in the blackness, and it's like the light just shining on her. She just casts like this shadow up against the stone wall of the train tunnel, and it's super bright. And she she covers her face with her arm, and it's just like, you know, trying to trying to see what's going on. But in her her drug addled state, she doesn't question what you've just done. Manny, yeah, uh, Manny begins t- to walk after you too. He's like, "I'm not, I'm not going to let you just go by yourself." Wait, yeah. wait up, wait up. Yeah, I sort of went to look at him and say, "Follow me." And so you guys begin walking. Melissa still maybe ten feet in front of you guys. You guys 
behind and you and Manny walking side by side uh, very slowly. You guys are walking very slowly and you hear the, the steps of the gravel underneath your feet as, as you guys are each taking these steps and it's, it's almost walking in cadence, you know, in this silence. And you guys walk for about 10 minutes and you're starting to wonder what the fuck is going on. And then Melissa sort of stops and then does a double take and she's starting to look around a little bit and she walks over to a, an orange cone and she just touches it for a second and is just like looking at it like longingly. And then she turns around again and is looking at the ground and she starts like holding her head and Manny's like, what are you doing? What? You're not lost. Don't tell me you're lost. And she's like, no, no, it's, I'm not, I, I know this is the right way. When I see the cone, I know it's this way. And he's just like, Manny, Manny just stops. And he's like, are you fucking with me right now? She's like, no, it's just, a, it's just a little bit further. And he's like hesitant. For a second, you almost see him pull back a little bit. And he just almost wants to turn around, but he keeps falling. And another five minutes or so passes of you guys just walking in silence. Melissa just stumbling ahead of you, barely able to, to keep herself upright. And then she reaches this sort of like a hole in the, in the stone wall. It's just like an opening. It's a small opening towards, towards the ground. And you're able to, to shine inside of it and sort of like illuminate further inside, but you see that there's corridors within and it's like hard to, to fully grasp what is actually inside of this hole. And she begins to, to start to crawl in and Manny just, just stops. He says, what, what the hell are you doing? What, what, what is this? And she's like, just come on. It's, it's my hollow. Just come on in here, you guys. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a hollow. You didn't tell me this was a hollow. I'm not just going to wander into some random fucking hole in the hedge you have over here. What the fuck is this? You see her. She's like, she's trying to explain and she's like, just come inside. Just I'll go first. You guys come inside and we'll, we'll get Emily. And it's like her just total, you know, it's like, it's like just talking to like a, a really drunk person who just, you know, you could say anything to them and they just, they just aren't really like getting what's going on. And she's like starting to try to crawl inside. And Manny is like going to, to grab her and she's like trying to like pull away from him. And just like crawl inside. And, you know, she, she gets loose and just goes in and he just stops for a second. And he, he just yells fuck. And it just echoes in the entire tunnel. And then he just, he just crawls down and just starts to, to go inside as well. And then a couple seconds pass and you're, you see him pulling himself through and you see his feet just kind of like go through the opening. And then, you know, the both of them just kind of disappear. Um, you're right behind and you, you have the light emanating from yourself, emanating from your contract. It's just kind of shining into this wide hole in the side of the wall that's, you know, looks looks too small for a person, but somehow they've both kind of been able to like weasel themselves inside. And you see Manny's head kind of like stick back out of the hole. And he's like, Frank, are you going to fit in here? Uh, I don't know, Manny. It seems pretty small there. <sighs> well, try. Come on, try. So, I'll yeah. try to pull you through. Frank will sort of try to get in there and not get stuck somewhere like a nook or cranny. And so when you put your when you put your head in to pull yourself inside, you feel like stuck right away. And it's just like it's it's terrible. It's like a panic feeling at first. And then you sort of like feel this opening just like getting bigger around you in a way. Almost like the the weird just the familiarity of the weird is something you're feeling right now as this opening just sort of extends itself to to let you inside and you you're able to just like crawl through on your elbows and then when you get inside there's like no standing room you notice uh melissa is completely crouched down on her knees and manny's on his knees as well and they're both kind of like crawling forward and manny's like occasionally just like looking back at you and you keep seeing this just look on his face of just um uncertainty and it's it's alarming. You've never really seen him scared. He seems like a little bit unsure of what of what's ahead. What are you feeling right now as as you are crawling into somebody's hollow, crawling into a part of the other side in a way? Like what does Frank feel about that? 
Well, Frank's not really happy about this at all, you know? He doesn't really like these tight, small spaces because he's big and he's pretty sure he's going to get stuck somewhere. And he really doesn't want to get stuck underground, especially like once uh, his light basically you know, dissipates. And uh, he's really stressed about this, you know, probably a bit claustrophobic. Uh, it's just a very uncomfortable position for him. I'm not really sure what they'll find, what Melissa actually wants to show him. She seems to be even more out of it than usual. And that's something you're noticing as well. It seems to be getting progressively worse. Her insanity, her drug-addled state, her intoxication. And she just she's reverting to just a total child, you know? She's just, like, becoming upset at the slightest thing. The whole situation is very insane, but... She's just like not trying to, she's not like working with you guys to try to make it easier, but she is just like kind of pulling you guys along in this, in this strange way. And so you guys are crawling after Melissa as she's kind of like bringing you through these, these tunnels. They're not really tunnels. They're, they're like these tiny, like slim hallways. And you wonder like how this could have possibly been like built into this. But like the tingling of the weird is trickling up on the back of your neck and it's it's making you kind of feel the closeness of the hedge as you trail after Melissa. And Melissa eventually gets to just like a, a tapestry sheet and she peels it back and crawls inside. And then Manny peels it back and crawls inside. Do you uh, go in? Yeah, definitely. Just probably See? rip it open by accident. <laughs> So you, you peel this sheet back and you, you go inside and it's this wave of, of just otherworldly energy just like passes over you as you are inside of the crow people's hollow. And it's just the otherworldliness of the hedge is just something you feel like the second you take a step past that sheet. It's like a, it's like a hot air that's just kind of like blowing against you and it's just like it's overwhelming for a second and it's like strange and magical feeling and you it gives you like this sensation of first fear then childlike wonder and then just total fascination with just the the energy of it and it's just like it takes you back because I, I would imagine that like Frank hasn't really done any wandering into the hedge much on his own probably a lot of people that you've talked to in this freehold don't really like make light about the hedge at all. They don't, you don't go there for fun. You don't mess around there. It's not, it's not safe at all. So what are you feeling now that you're in here and you get this, this wave of the, of the weird and the glamor that's, that's here. And it it gives you this, this spark. So Frank would sort of feel on one hand, he's a bit, glad or something that he feels it because he's very low on glamour currently as one point of glamour so on one hand you know feeling that energy around him is like something comforting for a changeling but it's also scary because that he knows like where that energy comes from and where he is basically where he is at you know where what it borders he knows what's behind it so to speak and it's a it's a scary and intoxicating feeling. Uh, yeah. You start to think about like the first time you you got drunk when you were like a kid or something, or just like or just like breaking the rules from your parents and just like playing at night. And it's just like this weird feeling of like freedom, just joy. And it smells like incense. It smells like just like perfume, like fragrance, just very in your face, kind of like the, the colors and the smells and everything. Everything kind of like shines brighter in here. And when you guys first part the sheet and you step inside, there's like a lot more room than was coming from the tunnel. And it's like a spatially, it doesn't make sense to you to, to come from such a small opening into such a, a big area. But it's like this big circular room. And you see like these little hammocks that are kind of like strung up all around. And in the middle of the room, there's just a lot of just junk. Like you see like a trunk of just like clothes. You see all sorts of like mortal human belongings. 
bedding, clothes, trash, uh, food wrappers. You see all types of stuff that like people would normally have just like in their apartment, but it's just kind of like seems out of place in this almost like magical landscape. This room that just does not seem to be out of architecture, seems to be out of something weirder. And Melissa kind of just like goes straight towards the other end of the circular room and kind of like pushes pushes on the wall, pushes on the wall. It's like a plywood section of wall that kind of just like tilts to the side and you see like an opening past the room and there's just sort of darkness in this room here and it's kind of like she's she's like moving a piece of the wall to get to what's behind it and she's like don't worry guys this will only be one second i'm just gonna get emily and we're gonna get out of here and you see the look on Manny's face is just total horror. He's just like, what the hell is going on? You're starting to get the vibe that Manny is not comfortable in this place at all. You don't sense that he's feeling the sort of juvenile fun energy of this place. And he's just like, he just looks horrified. He just looks like he's seen a ghost. Are you okay, Manny? You seem not okay. I just want to get out of here, man. This is this is weird, man. I just want to get out of here. Something something about this. I don't I don't feel right at all here. I just I feel, and you, you see him. He holds his head and he, his eyes like scrunch up, and he looks like he's about to just break down for a second. And he's just like, Whew. all right, let's let's just let's hurry up. Let's just get out of here. I I, I don't think I can stay here any longer. And Melissa's well, just like, I'll just I can wait and you can go back, okay. No, Frank, I can't leave you here. Let's just let's just do what we got to do and, and we'll get we'll go. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not I'm not leaving. And you see the the wall that Melissa's pushing on just kind of like falls away and you just see this swarm of flies just kind of like Run, come honey. out from behind it. Run. And he's he's stuck. He's just stopped. And you see Melissa's just standing there calmly. Dragon. And she she pulls out this duffel, very very long duffel bag. And it just seems like the flies are just like pouring out of this bag and the smell just hits you of just death, the smell of decay, of just rot. And she just goes, Emily, Emily, it's time to go now. And you see oh, Manny, he, no. he, he puts his hand over his face and, and starts to gag and he's like, Whoa! and he turns away and he's like, what the fuck is that? It's, it's Emily. We, we have to bring her. I can't, I can't leave without her. And there's just, you just, the buzzing of flies is just so loud. And just the smell of this is just worse than anything you've smelt before. And Manny's just like, oh my God, oh my God. And he's, he's, he starts to throw up, like, not just like projectile vomiting, not like a ton, but like you see, like he, he just dry heaves and like this trickle just comes out of his mouth and he just turns around to just, to just take off. And you guys, you guys turn and you're starting to like make it towards the sheet and you just hear like this rustle from the sheet again. And he just stops and he just goes, what the fuck was that? And you're still just hearing this, uh, these flies buzzing. Melissa just holding this duffel bag with just stench and flies just coming out of it. And you just like, you can't see what's inside the bag, but this bag is just, you know, there's holes there's dirt on it. There's there's like sand and dirt just pouring out of the bottom of it. It looks buried. It looks like it came from the ground. Manny, what's happening? Manny's just kind of like frozen for a second. And it seems like he's out of his element. He's You've never seen anything get the jump on Manny. Nobody's seen anything get the jump on Manny. Manny of the summer court with the, the high summer mantle where you just feel his heat every time he's in the room. Nobody ever gets the best of him, but you see fear in his face and you see dread in his eyes. Uh, how long did you say that your contract lasts? A scene. A scene? Oh. So it's still gone. Okay. You see like this narrow tunnel of light just kind of like pointing straight at the curtain and you see it move. And, you know, Manny, Manny kind of like puts his arm to stop you and you guys both, both stop and you see it like move again a little bit more and then it slides back. And you just, Melissa, just from the back, just goes, it's him. He's here. He's here. And you just see this, something peek into the, into the curtain. And it looks like a smile. And you, you, you start to try to focus your eyes. And you see that it's not like a smile. It's a mask, a Halloween mask, torn down the middle with, with threads 
thread sewing it back up of just a just a smiling pumpkin face. And it's torn to shreds, and it looks like it has other masks sewn into it as well. And Melissa's just, it's him! It's the Swamp Daddy! He's going to kill us! And like just as she says that, you just see the curtain pull back all the way. And this hulking brute of a figure just starts to pull himself through the enclosing and into this, this small room of the hedge. Of the hollow, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, how big is he? So he stands about seven feet tall. The way that you see him when he, when he steps into this curtain and he's just kind of just standing in the hollow, it's this seven feet tall hulking brute with a pair of dirty overalls that are kind of soiled, stained, ripped up. And then he has this striped shirt underneath that's just kind of just like a very basic, I don't know, like long sleeve, like work shirt. Uh-huh. And you see there's like a whole bunch of uh like key rings and stuff like attached to his hip, but they're more just so like they're like not like keys, they're like keychains with just like businesses and smiley faces and little like knickknacks and just little knickknack keychains, I wanna say. Not like anything of use. And he's got these like tan construction boots on. It's like there's no parts of his skin that are exposed. There's like these black winter gloves. There's this puffy winter jacket that he's wearing on the outside that just like covers up any part of him that, you know, would would show skin, would show any sort of recognizable flesh. And then you see just the mask, the goofiness of the mask, the just that smile. And you see just like the trickle of blood, the drops staining the mask, a few blood drops. It's just staring back at you, breathing heavy. So Frank's probably going to run up to him, shout, shout. He's going to shout at Melissa, get back, get back, Manny, come help. And he sort of tries to push him back from where he came. He's actually taller. (laughs) Wait, so who is taller, you or the swamp daddy? Uh, Frank. (laughs) Okay, I figured because you're an ogre. Yeah, I yeah. mean, so yeah, you you just rush up and um, let me see. How can I do a roll for this? I guess it'd be a contested, probably be something like strength plus athletics or strength plus brawl. Okay. Okay, so first I'm going to activate Might of the Terrible Brute, plus use a willpower point for that. Okay, so this is going to be a lot of dice. Yeah, Frank's going to be <laughs> 17 dice. If he, what the uh... fuck? <laughs> That's See, awesome, my... go for it. Yeah, and yeah, that's it totally looks like true. we're matched. Will Manny help me, though? Yeah, uh, Manny's definitely going to jump in and try to help. Okay, so you get Manny's three as well. So you guys are able to kind of just like push him back through this opening, and he, he goes backwards and just falls on his ass, like like rolls back a little bit, and just like hits the, the back end of this tunnel, and just like right away just is starting to like slowly get up and lumbering back towards the opening again. You can just hear these slow steps just starting to lumber back. And Melissa is just screaming bloody murder. Just, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, he's going to kill us right now. <sighs> Somehow this this is just like snapped her out of it. You know what I mean? She's just like, oh my God, oh my God, he's going to kill us. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. She's freaking the fuck out. She's still clutching this bag that's just emanating flies and stench and just grave dirt and filth within a couple seconds he's he's going to get back up to the uh to the opening again to try to try to make his way back through and it's almost like you're starting to sort of like gauge the responsiveness of this this thing this 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 brute and it's like you know he seems like slow to react you know you guys just like kind of Pushed him on his ass, but he's getting back up, and he's he's still he's still coming straight at you. Okay, and Manny, uh, we have to go. One second, I'm gonna make a quick roll for for him. Okay, so when he gets back up and steadies himself, you hear like the the steps starting to go towards the sheet again, and then you you hear him take like these two just like really fast steps and just try to like shove himself through the through the opening, and he's just like wriggling violently, just like trying to get into the opening. And he pulls himself through and, and falls and kind of stumbles again into the hedge. And he gets himself back up and he seems like very wavy, very out of it. But he's moving fast now. 
Okay. Uh, is there anything we can sort of ditch in front of him while we sort of run straight for the exit? Uh, well, you see, like, a lot of different kind of, like, belongings. I would say if you were to just grab for something at arm, you know, whatever's, like, an arm's reach of you, it would probably be just, like, there's, like, a trunk of clothes in front of you. That's yeah, like maybe a trunk of clothes, a table, anything, you know, anything. So there's a trunk of clothes in front of you. It's open, and there's clothes kind of, like, pouring out of it. You know, it's, like, open, open-faced open sandwich right now, but it's in front of you, and you could you could do yeah. whatever with it. Yeah, basically, you know, just throw it at him, make sure it slows him down, grab the other tube, guys, and just run the fuck away. Okay. I'm not even going to make you roll for that. You just pick up the the trunk with, with great ease, and you kind of just, like, you hurl it at him, and it hits him square in the chest, and it's like, it knocks him back. It's almost like he, he catches it, you know, like a football receiver, and he just, like, gets pushed back two steps, and he just lunges forward, takes these three massive steps forward, and he just grabs Melissa by the head. His hand, palm, over Melissa's face. And he's just holding her by the head like that. And he takes another two steps, and he's carrying Melissa in these two steps. And she just swings her head. He just swings her body and, you know, with, with her head in his fist... In his in his open hand, like a like a uh, like a basketball or something, he just smashes it against the wall, and you just hear this ungodly noise, just this cracking, and it just sounds just terrible. It sounds wet as Melissa's skull just cracks completely, and parts of her her brain matter are even just like coming from this this dent in her you know in her cranium. He's just ended her with this one one action. But as he stands right now, he is holding Melissa suspended in the air, her head crushed against this concrete wall, and he's just standing there holding her, and he just lets go, and she just sort of like slides down, and he turns back, and he looks at the both of you. Um, He's now behind you guys, and you guys have like a clear shot to the entrance. Let's go, Manny. We have to go. And yeah, Manny, without hesitation, you just see this, this look in his eyes of complete terror. He just has this wide-eyed look, like a little kid scared. And you guys just barreling towards that sheet. And you make it to the sheet, and you know you, you pull it. This time, you do rip it down. And you just kind of like go through there faster than anything. And you go through that tunnel faster than anything. And you guys are both just running down this train tunnel you know, at full speed. Yeah. You guys make it to uh, about, about where you can see the platform 10, 15 feet away. You know, you see where you guys originally jumped down and Manny stops to catch his breath and he puts his hands on his knees and he's just kind of just like catching his breath. His eyes are closed. So Frank will probably start screaming like, Rah! Rah! and start sort of punching the wall. It's just like, this is all my fault. What do you mean I it's your there, fault? And I had no glamour and I couldn't fight it. Frank, I don't know what that is. I'm not sure we can fight that. Did you see what he did to her? I could have taken it if I had glamour. I don't know. Something about that place gave me feelings that I haven't felt since since then. And oh man, oh my god! I and you see, he's like looking at his hands. He's trying to like. He's like, I, I think I need to sit down somewhere. I'm. I feel. I feel dizzy or something. I'm just. Oh man. You go sit down. I need to destroy something. And you see, he kind of just like slumps up against the the stone wall of this this train tunnel, and he puts his head in his lap, and he's kind of just like rocking back and forth. And you hear him; he's talking to himself, he's whispering to himself, "You're okay, you're okay, you're okay, it's okay, you're okay." And it's like bizarre because you've never seen him require comforting. You've never seen him try to talk himself down, try to comfort himself, and it's it's worrying in a way. It's like. Something about this tested his clarity, and you're not really sure what the what the like outcome of that was. Like, if he walked out, you're not you're not sure if he walked out of there the same person that he was when he went in there, and it's starting to worry you a little bit. Yeah, Frank's really annoyed with himself right now, just just because you know he's completely powerless at this point. Like, well, not completely powerless, but when it comes to you know supernatural things, powerless. 
So, and he, he just spent his last little point of glamour just to fight this thing back, but afterwards, you know, he couldn't really run up to it and fight it, which is what the Summer Court is all about, you know, taking the fight to the enemy. So, probably really angry, tr tries to take it out on something, maybe pick up a brick, you know, and smash a window of a car or something, really mess something up. You want to do that? You want to hop out into the? Oh yeah. You want? Sure. Okay, so you pull yourself up over the platform. Manny's um, leaning against the side of the wall where you would where you would pull yourself up. So he's not like on the tracks or anything or on the side. Need to come yeah. with me. And he'll he'll snap out of it and and you know he'll pull himself up over the ledge, and he's just sort of like staring, just like lost, like staring, like haunted. I, I'm sort of gonna take like a brick or something, you know, and just be there and Manny. I think the reason you picked me for your being your enforcer is, well, there's, I think, many reasons, but one of them is how in tune I am with Summer. And I think right now is the time that you should also center yourself more. Summer is a lot of things, but when it comes down to it, it's really one thing that's the most important. And that's rage. And he sort of throws the brick into a car. And the the brick just hurls through the, the windshield of this car. And you hear the alarm start to go off. And Manny's just jarred for a second. But he looks at you and he smiles. He reaches, he reaches down and just picks up whatever the closest thing is to him. And he just, he just throws it through the, the same windshield that you threw it through. And he's right. just looking at you smiling. And he just puts his arm on your shoulder. He nods. He doesn't say anything. He just puts puts his arm on your shoulder and he nods. And then I'm imagining you guys just start tearing shit up together in the parking yep. lot. Yeah, I'll just bash that car into shit. <laughs> so you guys are beating the shit out of this car right now. You're like shaking it and stuff. And it's like, you could tip it over if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, at the end, probably. Okay. Once we leave. So yeah, you guys are just smashing the shit out of this car. And, you know, Manny's just winding up and just kicking the door. He takes his, his jacket off and wraps it around his hand, and he starts punching the windows out. He's, he takes a, a pen out of his pocket, and he starts popping the tires. And he start, he's laughing hysterically, and he's just so, so damn happy at this point. Yeah, like forgot, Frank, you know? Frank is really also enjoying this, you know, just really crushing this car into little pieces, just letting it all out and all that frustration over the couple weeks, you know? Raymond, Ronnie, Melissa, everything. And it's so cathartic as you guys are, are as you guys are doing this. And it just you feel on top of the world. And you hear these steps starting to come up to you and you're, hey, hey, what are you doing? What are you guys doing over there? And you see this like overweight security guy kind of kind of running after you guys, trying to buckle his um his utility belt on at the same time. What the hell is going on over here? I assume he's feeling rage right now. <laughs> yeah, and you start to... All right, just give me any role you want um, to um, harvest, because this guy is, like, pissed. I know, so I guess strength plus brawl since we were smashing that car. Yeah. Would that work? Okay. Perfect. You can do. Uh, you can you can add a, a bonus to that, too, because of just, like, the level of destruction you guys okay. are able to accomplish. So do, like, a plus one. Okay, I'll do that. And so, okay, so I get... Two glamour plus one extra because it's my court glamour. Nice. And you just feel that surge just refill you. You feel the, the heat of, of summer and you just feel that rage and passion just enter you again. And it's so nice. This guy is just sort of like standing and, and you and Manny are just like facing him now. And he's just like, you guys better get the hell out of here. I'm going to call the police. It's like this squeaky, like balding, like overweight guy. And you see Manny, and he just he just takes like a step towards him, and just like kind of does like a fake out in the guy's face. Yeah. And the guy's just he, you know he takes two steps back and like starts to turn around and run. And he's like, "I'm calling the cops." <laughs> Let's go, Manny. And yeah, you snapped him out of it. And he presses the uh, the unlock button on the car, and you guys get in the car, and he just starts driving. He's not saying anything. He's just smiling. Yeah. So is Frank. You know. It's just just a little bit of happiness in a very, very uh, dark time. Super dark time. He's 
not even acknowledging like what you guys just experienced together. He's just kind of joking and like he puts the radio on and stuff like that. And he's kind of like tapping his fingers and stuff. Yeah. Frank will probably like fall asleep in the car or something. And yeah, so he just keeps driving and you just you just put your head down and doze off. Oh, hello again, folks. I'd like to tell you about the Facebook group we run called White Wolf and Onyx Path RPGs Gameplay and Media. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts or just media in general that deals with your favorite White Wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded? One that won't be drowned out by random posts and discussions so that your media could give the attention you deserve. The group is specifically run with the sole intent of being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. The group is already immense and continuing to rapidly grow, with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there.